Hello, my name is Gabe Zalma. I'd like to spend a little time and talk about Benghazi. It's a pretty popular topic these days. What I don't understand is why uh, Lindsey Graham and uh, Rhino McCain are, are running around talking to uh, Susan Rice, Ambassador Susan Rice. She's nothing more than a shill. I mean, that's what she is. Now, she should have known. She's at that level where she would have all the information made available to her. Whether she knew or didn't know, it doesn't matter. She was doing the exact same thing as was uh, General Petraeus. He was uh, singing a party song. I mean, Petraeus himself admitted that uh, when he uh, spoke on September the 14th, he sang the party song. He knew what he was saying wasn't true because his report uh, two days prior was very clear as to who did what when. He said that he knew and the CIA knew that the attack was caused uh, not by uh, people that were just upset over a video, but it was caused by radical Muslim extremists. Obama has a very difficult time whenever that sort of surfaces, because he does everything that he can to protect the image of Muslims, radical Muslims or any other Muslims. Whenever the Muslim word comes up uh, in any kind of situation, like in Fort Hood, Obama's right there to protect them. And i got to believe that's part of what Muslims have to do for each other. And I'm sure that it's written in the Quran by the, uh, the Prophet Muhammad. Anyway, you know, Obama did say that, uh, and this is regarding the attack, he said that, quote, if we find out there was a big breakdown and somebody didn't do their job, then they'll be held responsible. Now, does that include him as well? I mean, if the evidence ever surfaces and shows that he didn't do his job, will he be held responsible? You know, what's interesting is that the, uh, there's only one person that can order uh, a military strike on a sovereign nation, and that one person is Obama. There's no one else can, that can do that. Now, according to what I'm looking at right now, by 11 p.m. Benghazi time, this is right when it happened, 90 minutes after the assault began on the U.S. mission, Obama met with his National Security Council to discuss the attack. Okay, so he met with the Security Council 90 minutes after to discuss the attack, which means that he had to know about the attack, so then I guess in the 90 minutes prior to that, uh, he was watching the attack take place real time, which is what the uh, documents uh, that... Uh, determine where meetings take place and who participates in those meetings clearly stated because it said that Obama met with, uh, not Petraeus, but he met with uh, uh, Panetta and he met uh, with uh, Biden and they both went, uh, they all three went down to the, uh, to the room where they, they watched the thing take place real time. Anyway, the thing to me is pretty darn amazing that uh, nothing happens and the person can just do whatever he wants, whenever he wants, and he, he gets away with it. Uh, the only person that could have ordered uh, military intervention into a sovereign nation uh, is Obama. And uh, he did not choose to do that. Uh, he went to bed and got up the next day and flew to Vegas. Uh, so the whole thing really doesn't make any sense. Um, what's going to come of it? Probably nothing. And the reason probably nothing is, I suspect, that what will come of it is no different than what came out of Fast and Furious. It will reach a certain point where things become a little bit uncomfortable for Obama and his dysfunctional administration, and uh, he will just exert executive privilege, and it will all simply go away. And the sad part is four Americans were slaughtered, and one ambassador was slaughtered, and they're all playing the hot potato. You know, they're, they're all playing, I didn't know. He went that way. I mean, I didn't know, she didn't know, he didn't know. Well, the fact is, we know that Obama knew. And he's the only one that really needed to know. And we know that he did nothing. So, back to what he said at the beginning. And what he said, again, quote, he said that if we find out there was a big breakdown and somebody didn't do their job, then they'll be held responsible. So, the question is, who's going to hold Obama responsible? He didn't do his job. As commander-in-chief, it was his obligation and his responsibility to protect the American people. He didn't do that. So, who is going to hold him responsible? Rhino McCain? Crybaby Boner? I don't know. Uh, Diane Feinstein? 
Barbara Boxer. We know sure as heck it's not going to be the less than honorable Attorney General Eric H. Holder Jr. So who's it going to be? Can't be the American people. We're powerless. Can't be any of the senators. They're powerless. Can't be any of the congressmen. They're powerless. Who's it going to be? Nobody. That's who it's going to be. Now, we have an option. Uh, we can sit back and do nothing, or we can demand that there is a complete and full recount and audit on every single absentee ballot in key swing states. We don't need to know what happened in Idaho. We do need to know what happened in Pennsylvania. We do need to know what happened in Virginia. We do need to know what happened in Wisconsin. We do need to know what happened in Florida. And those are the key swing states that really will determine the future of America, assuming that the people rise up and demand a recount. It's up to you. I can't do it alone. We need to do it together. Contact your senator. Contact your congressman. I don't know what good it is other than they're the only ones that we have any chance at all with. So, let's call them and ask them. And you know what's amazing is, if they do help us, they're helping themselves. Because if Obama stays in power, he's circumvented Congress numerous times. He's very clearly said, if they don't do what I want, I'll, sit, I'll go right around them. And he has. So, you want your job, boys. Help us, and we'll help you. Thanks.